primary, and do you foresee South Carolina switching to party registrations in the future? I'll answer first. South Carolina does not require registration by party, which simply means that all of the primaries, partisan primaries, are open primaries. If you want to vote in the Democratic Party that's coming February the 29th, and you traditionally vote Republican, you're certainly free to do that. In June, in the primary where you have both Democratic and Republican uh, statewide candidates on there, you can vote in one party. You vote in, in the Republican Party, even though you voted in the Democratic Party in February. So, but you can't vote both of them in June. You have to pick a party. Uh, so they're open primaries. And I, I'll just add, um, aside from that, it is not uncommon for a state to not hold a primary for president of an incumbent president. And so that kind of came up a little bit about why are some states not holding Republican primaries, um, but a lot of states didn't hold Democratic primaries when Obama ran for re-election as well. So that's not a completely unheard of sort of a thing. So in a case like this, would that, obviously that tenders to hurt other would-be Republican candidates, is that a safe assessment? Yeah. Sure. Because yeah. we do have, I think we do have some other persons um, running under that uh, for, for, the, for the nomination for the Republican Party. Historically speaking, what can South Carolina primaries, uh, how can, what can South Carolina primaries, the outcomes tell us about uh, the decisioning or the deciding or the future outcome of presidential elections? Historically speaking. Well, typically, when you do have a Republican primary here, um, since South Carolina is a red state, uh, then usually whoever wins uh, the primary in South Carolina, that's kind of an indicator, since we have the first Southern primary, uh, of who might be the front runner for the Republican Party. Obviously, this time that doesn't apply because we don't have a Republican primary. Um, I think, you know, in terms of a Democratic primary, then looking at that, um, it still might indicate how um, Southerners or, or maybe more conservative states would feel about the selection of Democratic candidates, uh, but obviously not going to have the same kind of weight as if we had a Republican primary. I'll take a chance to uh, plug a book by some from political science colleagues of ours down at a uh, college in Charleston. Gibbs Knotts and Jordan Ragusa wrote a, a book called First in the South, and it is about South Carolina uh, primaries and why we are the first presidential in the South. And uh, you know that, that hit on the, the, the nail on the head. South Carolina has sort of every type of conservative. So for the Republicans, with the exception of the Newt Gingrich winning, um, the one, anytime we've had a presidential Republican primary, whoever's won, the South Carolina primary has gone on to be the nominee, save that one time. So, and it's really because of our history. We represent every type of conservatism. It's vaguely geographic, as y'all in the upstate know. I mean, you know, there's more evangelical conservatism, social conservatism in the upstate, more fiscal conservatism in the low country, but we represent every kind. So it's a, a good indicator of what kind of person is gonna appeal to every type of, of conservative around the country. So Democrats, even though, as pointed out, this is the state's going to go red. We are an R plus 10 state, meaning the Republican is going to be the Democrat by 10 points, you know, all else being equal, unless the Republican really sucks or unless the Democrat's really strong. It's going to be, you know, there's a lot of overcoming. But we are the first uh, state to really test the type of folks who support Democrats, the real coalition. Iowa is like 97% white. Okay? The Democratic Party relies heavily, for example, on African Americans. African Americans um, you know, make up about 29% of South Carolina, but they're two-thirds of the Democratic presidential primary vote in South Carolina. Women are two-thirds of the Democratic presidential primary vote in South Carolina. So we are the first test of what kind of candidates can excite the base of the Democratic Party. Right? And so, you know, first off, you're going to see how the core of the Democratic Party is going to vote. But if turnout's low, you're going to see lower turnout in the national election. And you saw that in 2016. Nationally, white turnout was up by 5%. Black turnout was down by 7%. So while Hillary Clinton just, you know, beat the socks off Bernie Sanders by nearly 50 bloody points. By the way, 
Martin O'Malley, anybody remember him? Also ran for president. Uh, but uh, you know, beat Bernie by 50 points. He did not excite the Democratic base as, or she did not excite the Democratic base as much. So that's how we're a good predictor. We're a good predictor of the base uh, and for both parties. Excellent.